Okay, so today uh, we're going to talk about kingdom citizenship. What does it look like to be part of a King Solomon Kingdom incubator? Or I might also say the word Hesed Kingdom, um, uh, which means love kingdom, right? Um, so they mean the same thing. Hesed Kingdom or King Solomon Kingdom or King Solomon Kingdom incubator. It's, it's all the same thing. All right. Um, so this has been um, a word brewing for uh, or part of the blueprint uh, brewing for probably a month or so. And just, uh, you know, talking to a few like Heidi and Hennick specifically um, about things they're dealing with. And, and um, so it's kind of all matched. So I think the timing is right for, um, for this chapter and the blueprint. Um, and I want to say, if you haven't been challenged yet, or even if you have been challenged in any of this, I guarantee you're going to be challenged today. Okay, so just kind of buckle up <laughs> and uh, uh, take a deep breath. Everything's going to be okay, <laughs> but this is going to challenge everyone's thinking. It has challenged mine because as I've been writing it and, pr and praying about it, I'm like, really, God? Like, is this even possible? Or, you know, um, like, how are we going to get to that, right? Um, it's quite, um, it's very bold. It's very, um, I, I could say ambitious if we were to work at it from our own strength. But I just want to say, be prepared to be challenged, okay? But I, I guarantee you this is from God because um, I couldn't make it up myself. <laughs> All right. So let's start off um, with a, just a couple of scriptures. I'll read really quickly. First is Philippians 3.20. It says, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly wait, wait for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so that was Philippians. It's after Jesus has come uh, and, and ascended back to heaven. So this means waiting for the second coming of Christ, right? So our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly await for a savior. All right. Hebrews 13, 14 says, for here, we do not have a lasting city, but we are seeking the city which is to come. All right. So the second coming, right? Or we could say even the new Jerusalem, because we know the new Jerusalem is going to descend down. Um, um, so what does this say? Just to, let's have a, 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 you know, a couple of quick comments. W what does this say to us about citizenship right now? Everybody's on mute. So if you're talking, nobody can hear you. So I'll say these scriptures again. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which also we eagerly await for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. For here, we do not have a lasting city, but we are seeking a city, the city which is to come. What kind of a picture does that create? for us. We're citizens. I would say that we need to start living from the kingdom, from heaven to earth. We've got to have that perspective. Otherwise, our circumstances, um, which we deal with every day, can overtake us. Yeah exactly exactly right is we are we're it says in other scriptures says we're sojourners here we're, this isn't our home right so um when we uh we're from heaven we bring that citizenship here L let's just say um let's just say well Frihiwat, you moved from ethiopia to the united states and not just anywhere in the united states the west coast of the united states right um, which, which has, uh, I mean, my goodness, they're completely different cultures, right? Um, but 
you brought with you a part of Ethiopia culture to um, your, you know, the people immediately around you, the people that know you, right? You bring a, a piece of that with you because that's where you're from, right? Um, if I were to move to France, right? I would come, I would have a, an English accent. I would start to learn French, but I would have an English accent and I would bring some of my culture there, right? Um, um, but as what happens is if, if, for example, if I were to move to France, I would adjust to that culture, right? Just uh, to get along with people, right? Um, and, uh, you know, I'd have to I think in France, they drive on the opposite side of the road than we do here in, in North America. So I would have to adjust to things like that. Um, you know, um, so basically what these scriptures, um, uh, what I believe they're saying is that we need to bring heaven with us, the culture of heaven with us here to earth. But I believe we're not to compromise. And that's the message of citizen of kingdom citizenship today is that we're not to compromise with the world. We're to bring heaven to earth, right? Um, um, and, and, and bring that culture and spread that around the world, all right? And we do that by planting um, uh, uh, King Solomon Kingdom incubators, miniature villages of uh, uh, versions of King Solomon's kingdom, and um, and let's just review that. Um, I, I'm just I want to say um, I want to uh, give an example of um, in sports. Um, what my experience in sport ministry was that. I could train up a lot of athletes, right? As in teams, clusters or groups or teams. And we would go and we would go on mission tours and we would put on camps. We would, um, goodness, um, we would play against other teams locally. Um, and everywhere we went, everywhere, every single game, every experience with the outside world, um, everyone commented. The other players, the uh, the referees, the other coaches, the parents, uh, the spectators, all of them came to me or one of my staff and asked, asking, what is different about your team? Even if we lost the game, they came and asked, what is different about your team? They could see something was different, how we played, how we conducted ourselves. And that gave me the opportunity or any of our parents or even of our players, we all were prepared to be able to explain why we were different, right? And of course, that was because of Jesus. So um, now some uh, with my academies, we trained kids up until um, 17, 18 years old when they graduated high school. And then they were to go off to university or wherever they were going to go uh, and, um, uh, you know, represent uh, Jesus. But what invariably happened when I followed up with them, unless they joined up with another Christian team or a Christian university or a Christian workplace, um, they invariably were not witnesses for Christ if they were on their own. If they say they joined a team, uh, like a secular team, um, all of them said the same thing, the ones that were on their own. Uh, I'm the only one. Uh, what will people say if I speak about Jesus? Um, on their own, um, uh, they, they had no, they lost their authority. They lost their passion for Christ they lost their they didn't lose their ability they still had the ability but they chose not to use it uh, for witnessing for Christ so all that to say is as kingdoms we're powerful we can be better witnesses just like King Solomon was where all the kings and queens and leaders from all around Israel came to him and said what are you doing and they paid him lots of money to uh, as a consultant or an advisor, uh, about what to do, what he was doing right. And it was, of course, all about God, doing things God's ways. That's how he evangelized. That's how he spread 
um, citizenship around the world. Um, uh, well, at least in that region, sorry. And um, so I'll, um, my point is that um, we need to be established, settled kingdoms, um, doing things God's way. And that's how we are a witness for the world. And we're not standing alone. Um, and uh, where we get compromised, right? We're not living in secular neighborhoods and, and going to secular schools with our children are going to secular schools where we're immersed in the world um, because we get watered down, right? And we compromise. So that's what those scriptures are, um, are saying. All right, so let's just uh, review. What does a King Solomon Kingdom incubator look like? All right, so... Um, it looks like a miniature version of King Solomon's Israel before he started marrying the wives from other nations, right? And um, and there's thousands of them all over the world, all connected together as, as one, right? They're highly prosperous. Everyone is healthy. Everyone is wealthy. They function very well. There's order, God's order in these kingdoms. People come from far and wide to see what we're doing right right? And that's our opportunity to witness. Um, all right, let me see here. Let's go to, I want to come back to this. Um, all right, so it looks like a village. It's self-sustaining. Uh, so it means we provide enough food for our own people and we sell the rest for, for, for a, good, um, a good profit. We provide enough electricity for all our homes, our barns and enterprises and community buildings. We provide um, a strong internet or connection or, or um, like uh, communication uh, for all our people. Um, clothing is provided, home construction is provided. You know, um, everything is sustainable. There's really, uh, when it's in full swing, right? Let's, so remember, we're all in the foundation building phase, but when it's in full, motion um and fully built everything is provided all right um yeah all things needed to live an abundant life are provided in the community and we sell the excess for a healthy profit all right there's so much abundance right there's no lack right um all relationships are mature healthy, joyful, peaceful, loving, all the fruit of the spirit are, ex are, are not just exhibited, but they're abundant, right? So love, peace, joy, gentleness, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, patience, and self-control, all the fruit of the spirit. It looks like the Garden of Eden. It's beautiful. It smells beautiful. It looks beautiful. It's even as, uh, you know, nicely arranged or, or, um, you know, the, the planning, uh, like where each of the zones, like the animal zone, the, uh, farming zone, the, um, or the agriculture zone, you know, the, the living zone, uh, the sport zone, it's all very beautifully laid out. All right. Um, the produce and any product. So whether it's woven rugs or clothing or, um, you know, carrots and celery and lettuce, uh, or even meat or wool products, any or art, anything that's created is beautiful. It's tasty. Um, it's large. It's colorful. It's creative. And the craftsmanship is exemplary. And of course, we have all the 14 mountains are fully functioning. All right. So, so that's uh, just, I want you to, uh, just to imagine really it's heaven on earth right now um in heaven we know there's gems and all that and, and gold and silver and maybe they'll have that as well i'm not sure well actually i believe it will but anyways um i just want us to have a picture of what it looks like you know um my i was talking to my son who is not a believer yet uh uh, a few weeks ago and uh, and he was saying mom I, I just want to live in a happy bubble and and I smiled because this is a happy bubble <laughs> right it's a thriving community all right um so it sounds like 
um, you know, like I was saying, like, wow, God, this would be amazing, right? I would love to have this. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, but is it possible, right? And I, like I did, I asked that question, God, is it possible? And of course it is, if that's the blueprint he's provided, um, you know, um, then obviously it's possible, right? And we have a role model that's gone before us and that's King Solomon. So of course it's possible, right? Um, so we have a role model, we have a blueprint and we can trust that, right? We can trust God. So um, uh, what makes it possible? So here's some things I jotted, jotted down. What makes it possible? The citizens, the people want it right? There's a desire for it. Everybody really is wanting this. They just don't know how to go about it, right? Or, or everybody's kind of doing it their, their own way. All right. And not God's way. All right. Um, uh, and I'm going to list some of the, the topics that we're going to go through, but um, uh, there's a sweet, it's possible when there's a sweet submission to God and to leadership and God's way, right? Um, it's possible when there's kingdom order, when everything is in order, God's order in the kingdom. So the, the family is in order. The extended family is in order, meaning aunts and uncles and grandparents and so on. Um, the government is in order. It's possible when leadership is chosen by God and not the people. Okay, now here I'm, I'm stretching because this maybe the first part of stretching people, but um, or challenging everybody. But in, in God's kingdom, there's no elections, right? Every the, the, all leaders, everyone is appointed and anointed by God, and that's how the people knew they could trust their leaders, right? All right, everything is centered around it's possible when everything is centered around God right? And his will is, um, is um, executed or implemented. It's possible when everyone lays down their own agenda and what they want or what they think is right, and they submit to God's way. And it's possible when everyone submits ownership to God. Now, this is a challenging one. This is going to be a really challenging one, but we're going to get into some detail on the ownership part. All right, so here's some of the keys. Um, ownership, right? Sweet submission, people first. And we're just gonna, we're gonna talk about general citizenship as well. See, these are some of the subtitles. No slides today, God, uh, guys, because I really want, um, I really felt like we need to Im Im imagine it. We need to picture it. When we can picture it in our own mind, um, then, then it, then it becomes possible, right? Okay. So let's see first ownership. All right. So again, really, really going to challenge here. All right. Psalm 24, one actually here, let's get, uh, oh, some of these are the passion translations. So I want to make sure actually they all are, so I'll, I'll just read them all. Psalm 24, one. The earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. Hebrews 3, 4. For every house is built by someone, but the builder of all things is God. 1 Corinthians 10, 26. For the earth is the Lord's and all it contains. Haggai 2.8. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. Psalm 50.10. For every beast of the forest is mine. The cattle on a thousand hills. Everything belongs to to God. So let's think about that. Everything belongs to God, right? The roof over your head right now, the building you're in belongs 
to God. The vehicle that's parked in your driveway belongs to God. Any business that you have belongs to God. The ground you're standing on belongs to God. Everything you have belongs to God. And in fact, your own life belongs to God because it says Jesus purchased us with his blood. His blood was the commodity. He exchanged our lives for his blood. That was the exchange. We are now his. But he says, it says in Matthew, and I can't remember where, I no, I, 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 don't, I no longer consider you slaves. I consider you friends, right? So in, in a King Solomon Kingdom incubator, the king or queen and none of the leaders, it's not theirs, right? Even if no matter how it's registered, right, it might be registered as a not-for-profit, it might be registered as a business, it might be just purchased, you know, like, um, you know, uh, like an individual or a couple purchase the land, right, and develop everything. It doesn't matter the situation. The king or queen and, and the leaders and the citizens own nothing of it, all right? So uh, let's really grab a hold of this because it's uh, it's what it's a critical piece. There's a there's a giving up. There's a surrender of everything that we have thought is ours, and maybe in our words we might say, "Oh right, everything belongs to God." In our word in our words we say that, but in our minds and in our hearts we're we're seeking claim on it, right? Um, Let me give you, I'm going to give you an example. This is a real life example. I gave a gift to somebody just on uh, yesterday. <laughs> um, and, and this person, um, well, it's a family member. They're very angry at me, partly because I'm a Christian. Uh, but um, this person is very, very angry at me. And so... I think I probably spent about $50. Oh, goodness, no. I probably spent about $85 on, on the, the whole gift. And um, it got thrown in the garbage. Like, literally, it got thrown in the garbage. And so, I, at first, I was, I was, you know, I was upset. I was like, oh, my gosh, I spent all that money on, you know, on these. It was a birthday gift. And I was like oh gosh, like uh, maybe I shouldn't have, maybe I, sh I kind of knew it probably would be thrown in the garbage. Maybe I should have only spent like $25. So it was a token gift. But, but then I was like, I thought, oh no, wait a second. No, God wanted that person to have that gift. That was, that was a, the, a kind, that was a good thing to do is the right thing to do. It was from God. Ultimately, I don't have to worry about the money or the value of the gift. It could have cost a thousand dollars. It was God's money. It was God's gift, right? I partnered with that and with my heart. Um, but um, I could, I, I, I realized I could surrender that and not feel angry or, um, you know, or sad I mean, I'm sad because I'm sure God is sad that it got thrown in the garbage because it was just as much from him as it was for me. And um, so I was able to just surrender that and say, no, you know what? It was God's money. It's what he would want. He wanted. And so it's not about me and, and me being out eighty five dollars. Right. Um, so it's that kind of thing. I mean, that's just a small example, but um, it, it's just, I, I, I want everybody to, to just kind of settle into that mindset of, um, you know, no matter what it, where you are at right now in building your kingdom, your King Solomon Kingdom Incubator, it's not yours. It's not your money. It's God's. All right. That takes some surrendering, okay? 
Um, but bear with me, we're gonna keep, we're gonna keep going, all right? Um, John 10.10 10 says, a thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. He takes, 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 right? But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect, life in its fullness until you overflow, all right? Romans 8, 17 says, and since we are his true children, before I read this, let's just clear the slate. We own nothing. We own nothing, right? All the money you've worked hard for your whole life, right? It's not yours. We own nothing. Clear slate. Um, it's not ours, okay? So we're standing there. If you imagine you're some, we're standing there in our living room or driveway or you know wherever we're at, right? And you own none of it, right? But listen to this, Romans 8, 17. And since we are his true children, we qualify to share all his treasures for indeed we are heirs of God himself. And since we are joined to Christ, we also inherit all uh, that is uh, that he is and all that he has. All right. So we go from just, um, you know, giving back anything we've taken in our minds or our hearts, we've taken ownership of, we go from having nothing to having everything. And when we can give up these little, these things, these, you know, the, the vehicle, the home, the business, or, you know, whatever, the boat or whatever, right? The land, you know, when we go, we, we, you know, we hold on to those things, then that's all we have if we hold on to that as we own it. But if we can give that up, give it back to God who it belongs to, then we actually gain everything in the whole entire kingdom more than we can possibly imagine becomes ours. Because remember, it's the enemy that comes to steal. It's God, it's Jesus that comes to give. All right. So let's translate this down in real life. Like, what does this mean in a kingdom? So let's say, you know, people want to come and live in your kingdom, right? Um, and you're considering, do I, you know, this, this is a big decision. Do I allow this, these citizens or this citizen or this family or whatever to come and live in my kingdom? All right. All right. So uh, I pretty much um, the rest of what we're going to go through is how you decide and how you govern that. All right. All right. So based on the ownership, we're still on the topic of, topic of ownership. When a citizen comes and says, yeah, I'd, I'd like to be a part of your kingdom, right? Um, well, what that means is they bring their current assets, right? So let's maybe say they've, uh, they've got a home and a vehicle and um, I don't know, maybe a boat or you know, whatever, or maybe they've got some farm animals, right? Um, you know, but uh, so let, let's just, so the conversation is, is, well, uh, the dynamic of how that works is the assets become part of the, the your King Solomon Kingdom Incubator. All right. Remember, I said I'm going to challenge everybody. <laughs> All right. But we need to, we can't just talk about, oh, yeah, God, no, God owns everything, but then hold on to things. This is walking it out right? This is actually putting legs on our, on our faith, legs on scripture. We're doing it. So, you know, so this, this family or, you know, they would sell their home, right? And the money from the sale of that home would 
uh, pay for the building of a new home in your King Solomon Kingdom incubator. I say your, it's God's, but you're leading them. Um, uh, uh, that would build a home. And of course it has to fit with the blueprint, which is all natural. So that's cob, hemp bricks. Um, and actually now I found a source of a lot more um, uh, building, natural building products from eucalyptus and all kinds of stuff. But anyway, that's besides the point. The new home that's built needs to fit the blueprint, right? All natural building materials. All right. Um, and, and that's paid for out of, out of the sale of their home. But the home belongs to the kingdom, right? Becomes what the kingdom, uh, a kingdom asset, right? Um, and uh, let's say they have farm animals, right? They get integrated into the kingdom farm animals, right? Uh, and become the property of the King Solomon Kingdom Incubator. All right. Um, but, but when the family or if, if a family moves in and, and they do this, uh, again, they're giving up their own assets, but they're gaining the whole kingdom because they become a citizen of the kingdom. They become, and I'll talk about this a bit more, uh, um, a few points down, uh, they become entrepreneurs within the greater kingdom and uh, King Solomon Kingdom Incubator and we need to think of our King Solomon Kingdom incubators as enterprises, right? So one, they're a one large family, right? So there's that, but they're also one large enterprise because remember one of our core values is we are to build much wealth, right? So the citizen becomes an entrepreneur in the kingdom. They become part of the family and so on and so on. All right. So. Um, Right, so ownership of the entire King Solomon Kingdom incubator does not belong to one individual. Um, um, and that being said, again, depending on the country, there needs to be some thought put into how it's registered. So again, it could be registered as a business with the government because right now in government systems, uh, unfortunately we need to register if it's a business. We need to register if it's a non uh, a nonprofit. Um, if it's a family thing, then um, it doesn't need to be registered. But there does need to be a land title. And uh, just a reminder of that: we must hold the title deed to the land. Okay, no, no, um, um, uh, what, uh, no um, compromises there. We must own the title deed, right? So sometimes that needs to be held in an individual's name, but they're holding it as a steward for God. Okay, I want to stop there and uh, open for questions. So let's just say if I, let's just say if we're supposed to, let's say we sold our place and um, we became citizens of another kingdom, um, and like let's just say it was part of another family. How would how would do you take title um, if you're joining another kingdom or become a part owner of that? I mean, like that's that's a lot of obviously it's a lot of risk for for somebody to, to be able to do that, but you know you're you're trusting God and and yet and the other person that. Uh, you know, things will be kind of shared equally and yeah. Yeah. So I'm just wondering how you take title uh, on the property or if you do. Yeah, that's a really good question. And, and I want to say this, um, as we move along and we, um, we'll develop, there'll be more details, right? This will be more written out in detail, like specifics as we encounter certain situations. So you're talking Canada. So that I'm familiar with Canada. So um, um, the in so if you guys were to sell there and move to the other, um, what I would do if I were you guys, what I would be looking for is this a kingdom I want to be a citizen of, right? What am I seeing in the leader? And actually, I'll bring it up now. I have it further down, but um, yeah. 
so questions I would be asking, has that king or queen been appointed, the, the, the person that's hold, that leading that other kingdom that you're looking to move to, have they been appointed and anointed by a prophet who is clearly directed by God, right? So remember in the Bible, kings and queens are appointed by a prophet, like Samuel appointed King David after going down the line of brothers, right? And no, it was David, right? Um, a spirit, a prophet that is clearly directed by God. And um, so it has this king or queen, queen been anointed and appointed by a prophet. That's one. Is there fruit from this king or queen? How are they living their lives? Right? I would want to be examining that, right? Um, um, a relationship. Do you have relationship with them? Have they been made an effort to build trust? Have they shown vulnerability? Uh, um, have they shown that their submission to God, right? How are they governing uh, their families, right? What is their family situation like? How is that being governed? Um, how, what does their existing property look like, right? So um, uh, uh, like, like how would I put it? Like when you walk around their kingdom, do you see God? Do you sense God? right? Um, is there evidence of the Holy Spirit living there, right? Are the animals prosperous, right? Are their children prospering, right? Um, let's see. Oh, is that king or queen, that leader of that new kingdom, are they submitted to um, what we, we would say royal or um, grand council, right? Are they, are they, uh, you know, are they coming to training? Are they attend? Are they, um, are they engaged in the culture that's being developed? Right. And that's, if you believe the Hesed culture is good. I'm not, I'm not a cult leader here. <laughs> right. Uh, um, you know, um, yeah. So is there a submission to a, a, a greater authority on earth as well as to God? Right. Is there accountability? Um, uh let's see is the blueprint being carried out like 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 um or is there you know shortcuts or compromises right um yeah the, the, i think those are the questions i had put down uh yeah so um these are the questions i would have now if i had yes to all of those myself i would do it and i would i would absolutely do it yeah and then, um, so now your question is um, uh, the title. How does the title transfer? Um, so in Canada, uh, it could be registered as a business and each citizen is a shareholder. That's one way to do it, right? Um, but then you're paying taxes. Uh, well, there's a way to get around paying taxes in Canada. Basically, all your dividends any, any profit goes into buying more land and then you don't pay taxes, right? So you have your revenues, you have your expenses, any, any net revenue goes to that. I mean, and that includes paying people, right? Um, uh, any net revenue goes towards purchasing more land, then you don't pay taxes, right? Which also expands the kingdom because you're buying more land. You see what I mean? Um, so um, it could be registered that way. It could be registered as a not-for-profit in Canada. Uh, and there's different legislations that go with that. Uh, you are in Canada able to turn a profit as long as the profits go back to being reinvested and not, uh, how do I put it, uh, um, being uh, so a not-for-profit, um, how do I put this? Yeah, any any profits need to go back into the 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 not for profit. In other words, buy more land, buy more sheep, buy more whatever, right? Uh, um, yeah, and that includes paying for people because people's pay <laughs> becomes an expense. Does that make sense? You can also do. Uh, I just realized you can do joint tenancy. There you go. So that's not something I'm familiar with, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I, 
I've totally forgot that I, I just realized as a mortgage broker um, from from what I've done before that you could take register, you could take reg you could take title as as joint tenants. So and I I I don't um, I don't know too much about it uh, or don't recall, um, but I think you can also assign a certain percentage um, through that as well, like fifty percent ownership, thirty percent, twenty percent. So just really depending on what your um, what you are are um, what you agree with. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to write that down. That's a good one. So joint tenancy. Um, or a business. All right. Yeah. And I think here's where we're at right now at like, again, our core value, we're building as we learn and learning as we build, right. Um, as we move forward, we'll, we'll see some answers. We'll start to see, oh, okay. This is a better way. Joint tenancy or register as a business or register as an, we'll see, oh, this is a better way. And it's, fairly easy to switch over. I mean, in Canada anyways, um, it, I mean, it is a, a fair amount of, you know, paperwork and stuff, but um, uh, at this point, I don't think it's a mistake going with any one of these. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, now in Ethiopia, for example, I'm completely unaware of the existing government situations and how land is allotted I'm completely unaware. Does that answer your question first, um, Raymer? Yeah, it does. Yeah, thanks. Yeah? Okay, good, good. Um, but it was a good question. And I'll, I'm gonna, in the chapter that's written, I'll uh, add that in, uh, cause that's good information. Yeah, so it would be uh, mean a matter of kind of each, each country uh, would have to be evaluated for its existing laws and legislations. Um, because unfortunately we do, yeah, we have, we, you know, we want to obey the law of the land and not leave ourselves liable for anything. Yeah. Any other questions? All right, so let's move on. So that was ownership, right? Okay, so remember we're talking about kingdom citizenship. We talked about ownership, right? Now, the second one, so along with ownership, there's a heart position, there's a hot heart posture in that that's involved in that as well, right? But that's, that's probably the most important part. All right, number two, sweet submission, okay. This is a word God gave me months ago now, not just submission, but sweet submission. Let me just try to, I'll remember back of how I came to that understanding. I'd been spending time with God and uh, let me remember the process. And, um, oh, this was last year, right? It was last year. And uh, uh, there's a person who's a prophet to me uh, from uh, Swaziland, and it's not called that anymore, but I can't remember the name of the new, the new name for that country. Uh, but she's a prophet who um, just somehow reached out to me. Uh, well, she threw an international prayer group I was a part of. We've never, I've, I don't even know what she looks like. Uh, but she just started prophesying over me individually uh, on a regular basis. And it was clear God had sent her to be a prophet for me. And so uh, she had sent some deliverance material, um, uh, just totally prophetically, and um, didn't realize that there was this, well, I, can't remember, I think it was Jezebel and Ahab. And um, she said, I think this will be helpful for you. And she just sent it. And I started reading through it. And I was like, oh, my gosh. That that's present in my family line, the the Jezebel Ahab uh, spirits. That is in my generational line. I need to um, uh, deal with that. And so I went through all the deliverance material. When I had gone through and uh, prayed off uh, Jezebel and Ahab for my family line, um, experienced the deliverance, 
immediately I was able I was able to see more. I was meaning uh, 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 see more of the has said blueprint. I was getting revelations. I could see more. And then the more I could see it, the more I became it. And then the more I became it, the more I was able to live it like um, and, 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 and pass it on to other people. And at that point, I felt when I got to that point, the feeling was like I was just falling backward and totally submitted to God, not, not out of obedience, not out of, I knew it was the right thing to do. So I got to do it. It was completely like running to submit to him because his way is better. Because when I, when I, when I gave up ownership of things, I gained everything. And, and I wish I could describe this feeling. It was such a sweet, sweet feeling of submission to God, of, of, you know, giving up my ways, giving up what I thought I owned and running to submit to him, not because I had to, not because I was told to, not because it was the right thing to do, because I wanted to. I wanted to submit to God. I wanted more of what he had to give. I, I just, I couldn't get enough. I, and the more I sacrificed, the more I gave up, the more I let go, the more beautiful and sweet the feeling was of being submitted to him. And so that's why I call it sweet submission. And, and so what does that look like in a kingdom? What does sweet submission look like in a kingdom? So let me, uh, I'll read, actually, why don't we take turns reading some scriptures? Um, uh, so, uh, uh, Frehiwat, could you read Ephesians 5.21? So Ephesians. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. My Bible is in a box. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No Let problem. Me, I'll go to the box. I can go to the garage and this, somebody oh, else no. can take that while I'm looking. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't have to go to the garage. Don't worry about it. It's okay. It's okay. I'll look. I'll look. Okay. So if you okay, if you can look for Ephesians five twenty one. Okay. Uh, Asabash, could you do Romans eight seven? Romans eight seven. Um, Heidi, could you do first Peter? Romans eight eight seven. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Heidi, could you do First Peter five five? First Peter five five. Uh, Raymer, could you do Hebrews thirteen seven? Hebrews thirteen seven. Sorry, sorry. Hebrews. Oh. Hebrews thirteen seventeen. Raymer. So Hebrews 13, 17. And Henek, uh, could you do 1 Corinthians 11, 3? And then I'll do Colossians 3, 20. All right. Uh, sorry, Kate, can you repeat that again? Sure. 1 Corinthians 11, 3. Okay. All right. All right. Eleven. Ray White is ready. Okay. Let's. Uh, we'll let everybody make sure everybody's got their scripture first, because so we can I want everybody to hear. They're in order. Um, just kind of listen to. Um, well, there are different types of submission. Uh, uh, we'll listen to what the order is telling us. All right. I think everybody should be good by now. Okay, so Fehiwat, do you want to go ahead? Ephesians 5.21. Yes, I'll read it in the name of Jesus. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Nice. So submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. All right. Asafash, Romans 8.7.
the sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God, nor can it do so. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Right. All right, Heidi, First Peter 5, 5. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Mm. Nice. Raymer, Hebrews 13, 17. Obey your spiritual leaders and submit to them, continually recognizing their authority over you. For they are constantly keeping watch over your souls and guarding your spiritual welfare as men who will have to render an account of their trust. Do your part to let them do this with gladness and not with sighing and groaning, for that would not be profitable to you either. So in that one, it's saying there's an advantage to us when we submit. All right, Henek, 1 Corinthians 11.3. But I want, I want you to understand that the head of every man is Christ. The head of a, the head of a wife is her husband, and the head of Christ is God. All right. So we started with just submitting to one another. Then we went to um, submitting to elders, leaders. Then we went to yeah again uh, submitting to leaders. And now we're talking submitting within the home, right? Uh, order in the home, in the family. And I'll, uh, I'll do Colossians 3.20. Children, obey your parents as God's representatives in all things. For this attitude of respect and obedience is well-pleasing to the Lord and will bring you God's promised blessings. The reason why I did the scriptures in that order was to talk about all levels of submission, of sweet submission. And, and, and basically it talks about, it's, it is about obedience. They all talk about respect and obedience, right? But um, in a, at least a couple of them were talked about, but it brings God's blessings, right? To you and to the kingdom, right? Um, Sweet submission, you know, it's kind of the same as ownership. When we give up ownership of our things, we actually gain ownership of everything. So there's a, you know, the new world order or the cabal or whatever you want, the deep state, whatever you want to call it, their mandate, they're, they're saying um, by the year 2030, you will own nothing and you will like it or something like that. You will own nothing and you will like it something like that i think it's be happy oh you will be happy that's it that's it you will own nothing and you will be happy is what this new world order is is trying to you know uh sell us on but god says <laughs> you will own nothing but you'll own everything and you'll be happy <laughs> right um that's our god right so sweet submission is like I said before, a willingness to submit. There's it. I, I if I I wish I could explain the feeling of how exhilarating it felt to just run to God and say, "I give everything up for you. I give it up because it's so much better than what I have for myself. It's so much better. It's so sweet. It's it feels so good." All the responsibility comes off our shoulders to make things work. All the toil and trouble to gain things, to earn things, to, to gain status. Like it's, we don't have to work for it anymore because we already have everything. He gives us everything. We don't have to work for it. And 
as far as status goes, we already have status. We're princes and princesses in the kingdom, uh, the, the, the royal kingdom, not a royal kingdom. So why wouldn't we submit to that? Why wouldn't we run to that? It's such a sweet feeling. Um, so this can only come from a heart that is so tender and adores Christ, not just, you know, yeah, he died for my sins, John 3, 16, you know, not kind of in a reciting way, uh, or just like, you know, it's what I learned in Sunday school, but just adores Christ. Um, I have no other way to describe it. <laughs> um, and, and we just desire to give up everything. So, you know, let's say you're, you're the kingdom owner, you're the king or queen, and you know you know you're talking to someone who wants to move into your kingdom and and you're you say to them are you willing to give up everything are you willing to sell your home and then build use that money to build a home here in this kingdom and it becomes kingdom property kingdom assets like uh are you willing to do that that's how i would approach it are you willing to do that some of them are just going to say you're nuts you're crazy. I'm out of here. Right. And you're like, yep, no problem. Have a great day. Right. And some of them will go, oh, that's okay. Oh, that's biblical. Right. Okay. I know the answer is yes, but I'm not quite sure. Well, the list, this person that you can reason with, you can, uh, uh, right. Um, uh, yeah. Anyway, so sweet submission. Do I need to go any farther with this? Um, what did, uh, okay, what does sweet submission look like while you're in the kingdom? To me, the, the, the very first thing, like the, the, the essential to build a culture of sweet submission is daily worship and prayer, morning and night. You start the day, everyone submitted to worship and prayer and you finish the day all together. It doesn't matter if you've got a thousand people in your kingdom or five, um, you start and you end the day in, in submission um, to God with daily worship and prayer, morning and night. That builds a culture of sweet submission because we can't make people submit. <laughs> we, we've tried, or I have anyways, maybe I'm the only one. <laughs> only God can have move someone's heart to sweet submission. Only God can do that. So we bring our people together for worship and prayer morning and night and let God, the Holy Spirit, move their hearts. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. And I went through those questions about, you know, should I join this kingdom? Uh, the, I went through some of the questions when, with, in answer to Raymer's question. Things that you should ask, right? And these same questions... You could ask of yourself, right? What kind of a king or queen am I that people would want to come to my kingdom? And um, this is another talk altogether, but uh, I, I always I, I put it this way. People come to the well. People come to the well. People want fed. It doesn't matter how healthy they are. Um, people come to the well to be fed. And if, if you're not providing a well, right? A spiritual well, a physical well, an emotional well, a relational well, you know, where people are fed, people won't come, right? So the king, for king or queen as well, there's um, that same sweet submission to the people to serve them. All right. Any questions on sweet submission before we move on to the next one? Not really a, a question, but um, just when you were talking about that sweet sub submission and trying to describe it, I feel like it's like a perfect piece that we just we we become so aligned with uh, with God's heart, and we we sojourn with each other in this this you this union because of that peace. And, and we'd be willing to, we'd be just be so excited <laughs> to give up 
um, just like in the in the book of Acts and in uh, Nehemiah's day and in King Solomon's day, where people were eager to give to the building of certain things. Yeah. And it, it's interesting, too, because I just looked up the, the meaning of the name Solomon and his name means man of peace. Oh, so it what? comes from Shalom. Yeah, his name oh, comes yeah. from Shalom, which means man of peace. So he was a man of peace who drew many, many, many people to himself. They were attracted to it. They, they wanted to um, travel far, far, far on their camels or whatever to meet this man of peace that they had what they, he had what they desired. And it was all because of God. So it, he did nothing in and of himself, did he? I mean, he probably inherited whatever King David had but God multiplied it to him. So really, really was all God's. It belonged to him. <laughs> Good. I love it. Good point. I love it. I was just absorbing what you were saying. It was beautiful. Yes, peace. If, if I were, you know, that feeling of that, of sweet submission. Yeah, it's, abs it's, it's a peace beyond understanding. It's a, in a it's a, joyful Pete. yeah it's just um it's a it's an amazing it's a heavenly feeling yeah absolutely peace is the word i like how yes i didn't know that that solomon's name meant peace so absolutely yeah thanks for that heidi that's awesome yeah okay so let's move on uh to uh the third part people first okay Remember, I said I'm going to challenge everybody today. <laughs> so, people first. All right. I want to. I want to. I want to position this really well. All right. People must always be the focus. When people are healthy, the tasks or the mission is accomplished with joy and peace. We here we are peace again right so i'm going to see this again okay I'll, I'll send it to point the primary duty of kings and queens and leaders must be to fan the flames of the citizens not making lists not tasks not mission the mission is to fan the flame i'm going to explain that a bit more of the citizens so this flame I'm talking about is the Christ flame <coughs> that is in every heart, every human being, even Muslims have a Christ flame in the every, um, every living being has a Christ flame because we were all created, well, people, sorry, were created in God's image. And uh, we existed in heaven before we came to earth. That Christ flame is in our hearts. And so a wise king or queen knows to fan that little flame into a roaring fire so that the the whole the presence of the holy spirit is so big that the glow is outside their bodies right it says that peter uh people were healed just in peter's shadow because he carried such a strong presence of the holy spirit right the, well, Jesus, of course, because we know he was fully God. The woman who just touched his his uh, his robe was healed just by touching that. I think it was just the tassel on his robe uh, and she was healed. Right. Um, so when the Christ flame is so big that um, uh, that, that um, sorry, the leaders, the kings and queens and leaders need to fan that Christ flame in their people so that they they glow, literally glow. Well, maybe not literally. Well, maybe literally glow with the presence of the Holy Spirit. Then the tasks naturally get done. Okay, this is really an inverted way of world thinking. Right and and a, a real mindset shift that we have to embrace. The world says, you know, you need to have two cars in the driveway. You need to have, you know, um, you know, 
not just a house, but a house with a pool and then a house with, uh, you know, just more and more and more stuff, right? It's all about material growth. And the kingdom is about growth, right? It talks about how many camels, how many cows, how many sheep that they, they, they all had, right? That's a number, right? But how, like, let's just take Abraham, for example. Abraham was a well for people. Abraham discipled well. He served his people well. He loved his people. He fanned their flames. And that's how he became prosperous, right? Um, so it's people before task. All right. It's really hard. No, I'm not going to speak that. I'm not going to speak those words. This is a real mindset shift. All right. Um, okay. When, when someone's Christ flame is so full, they will do anything. Like, like anything is a joy for them when their Christ flame is so big, you know, um, shoveling poop <laughs> manure onto a garden is a joy to someone whose Christ flame is so full. Um, let me think here. I'm going to say gardening because that's a hated or love it or hated thing. I love gardening, uh, like flower gardening. Um, and uh, so it's a joy for me to garden, but some people hate it, hate it, right? But someone's whose Christ flame is so big, it's been fanned to such a roaring, fan, uh, roaring fire. Um, everything is a joy to them because they, they're living in that culture of heaven. All right. Further, when someone's Christ flame is, is, is huge, their spiritual gifts, their experience, their passions come alive and they're activated to, to duty, if you will. Or I, duty is a, kind of a, la a laborious word, but um, they're activated to, to the task, to the mission. They, they, you, you, you won't be able to contain these people, these citizens, from doing what they were called to do, right? Um, and um, let's say their, their calling is the farming, the, an the animals, right? Mucking out uh, stalls, it's just a term, but um, what would it be called more globally? You know, cleaning up barns, like poop and yucky stuff <laughs> it installs it's a joy for them right because that's their calling that's what they that's their destiny that's what they're called to do and they love the animals right that's not uh, i mean um how do i put it um i i i love animals um it's it, it's not my calling necessarily farming is not my calling <laughs> um um oh i'm getting a little off track here um think of yourself right i just want to i just i'm just going to fan everybody's flame here everybody's christ flame here and i'm just going to say uh say um say more holy spirit just fill everyone here fill everyone here fill their hearts with your holy spirit god god i just ask you to give them visions and dreams of what you call them to be um out way outside of their own thinking, way outside, way beyond their wildest imagination. Um, whether that's to be a king or a queen, whether that's to be a leader of entrepreneurship, whether that's to be a leader for farming, whether that's to be a leader for education, whether that's to be a leader for home construction, uh, wh whatever that is, God, I just ask you to give them dreams and visions and passions and ideas and inspire them, God that it's uncontainable, uncontainable. Nothing will be able to stop them. There'll be nothing standing in their way uh, because there's such a passion to fulfill uh, their calling and their destiny. So um, I don't know how you feel right now, but um, <laughs> um, this is what a leader, a king or a queen 
in a kingdom does is pray over their citizens to fan the flame um, daily. You can encourage them, right? Oh, I notice that you're really good at drawing. I notice that you're you're an artist. You're an artist. I wonder what kind of things you could create as an artist. What kinds of things? I mean, that do you need? Do you need paint? Do you need um, a canvas? Do you need uh, um, yarn to weave? What would you like to do? Uh, what would you like to create? These are ways that we fan the flame, uh, flames of our citizens. Um, all right. I'm way off my notes here, but I was going with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> um, okay. Pray individually for your citizens. All right. Right, leading them in worship and prayer, morning and night. Uh, identify their gifts and their roles they're to play in the body. Sometimes people don't see it in themselves, right? They don't see their gifts. They don't see their talents. And we need to unlock it. That's our job as leaders. Unlock them um, and let that flame out. Um, yeah, and continually encouraging them um, in their roles. Challenging them right? So challenging them to take another step or see, let me get my words, challenge them eat each one to see more of themselves than they can see them for themselves, right? Mm -hmm. Challenge them to take one more step or two more steps or three more steps um, to think bigger and more, um, um, and step more into their destiny. And they might not step into it for another week or month or year or whatever, but always be challenging them a little bit more um, um, to step more into themselves. Um, all right, product, okay, yeah. So here's another statement. Productivity bubbles out of healthy, spirit-filled, encouraged uh, citizens. And the work, no matter what the work is, is not laborious laborious sorry um all right here's another uh another writer downer <laughs> expansion of your kingdom comes through the people right so we can plan or uh, you know you know we can plan how it's going to expand and we do need to have a plan don't get me wrong we do need to have a plan but the expansion needs to come through the people. Um, if we're leading people like, you know, a bull ring on the nose, like we're, if we're, um, we're, we're yanking them forward um, uh, and there's no peace and joy in that, then eventually it's going to crumble. It's not sustainable. Um, but if, if we're instead behind people fanning the flame, then they will move forward into growing the king, your king, your King Solomon Kingdom incubator with joy and peace. Okay, I, I think I'm making my point. <laughs> um, all right, I'm just going to go through my notes here. I'll, I'm going to open any questions, testimonies. Yes. Hello. Hey, Asapesh. Yeah, I was. Uh, it's very, uh, very touchy and uh, very. I was um, remembering some some experiences uh, many years ago. I can say. Um, uh, I was in a, a church leadership position, and um, I remember there was a big fight between uh, being a past focused and people focused. So, uh, wow, well, uh, indeed, it is a confirmation for me today. Uh, not only today, actually, I'm working with people. Uh, I focus with people, but the Holy Spirit also 
also confirm it to me to to strengthen to, to, to encourage people on this area and you know um, in some church maybe uh, i don't know in your area but in our situation um, uh, some leaders uh, are focused on tasks you know uh, they uh, they mention you know in our time 30 years ago or 40 years ago we were walking on foot you know with a barefoot you know we were evangelizing people um, uh, and you know you have to do that you know for the, the youngsters just wondering you know to when they hear this uh, because we have to analyze the situation, the, the current situation, you know, the youth and their backgrounds. So it was um, a big struggle, uh, actually. Uh, you know, of course, the confirmation uh, guided me was I met one of the youth who was a, a very potential evangelist uh, after 15 years, one five. After 15 years, when I was working on my uh, neighborhood, it was I was it was so joyful. I was full of tears when I saw him. He was talking a lot of things, you know. The the people who encouraged him, you know, uh, just accepting him as a youth, as a person. Uh, the, he was mentioning some sisters, some. Uh, leaders, you know, and he was just full of tears when he met me. And actually, he 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 is aware of what I am doing now. Uh, and he, you know, I was so touched. I was so uh, so emotional when I met him because he passed through a a very strong struggle, you know, because people were focusing on the task, you know, task only task, you know, go there, give, you know, he didn't get the, the attention and the respect um, the inside, what is inside in him, uh, his talents, his gift to send his, uh, you know. Anyways, what I want to say is it's, 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 it's a big difference, uh, it, you know, God, works and touch people when we focus mm. these people's lives. Yeah. Because when Jesus Christ was working at the, uh, when, uh, uh, when he was uh, on earth, you know, he was working with relationship, with yeah. just touching people, um, you know, uh, touching, healing them, encouraging them, you know, um, recognizing their problems, understanding them, you know. Um, so um, uh, I think this was really a very, a very uh, amazing message, and it reminds me and encourages me to to do more focus with people. Of course, the task will be done after that. Thank you. God bless you. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Asafesh. Like you provided a really good, um, you know, how you felt when your leader was task oriented. Um, um, yeah, you felt um, it wasn't fun. You felt pressured. Um, uh, it was a burden, right? You felt unappreciated um, versus um, when you had a people focused leader and you felt understood. You felt uh, not alone. They, they walked with you. Um, um, that's a really good contrast. Oh, um, all right. Hi, Ephraim. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to mm -hmm. end, end your screen share. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, they, um, uh, sorry. Yeah, so there's quite the contrast, right? So, you know, um, 
uh, I know when I've been in business before, sometimes we had to do, uh, we were encouraged to do, um, uh, you know, to, to check with your people, do a survey of your people. How do you feel right now? Uh, or how, how are they responding to your leadership? And it was kind of a scary thing sometimes because you, you know, not sure what you're going to get, <laughs> but, um, um, yeah, uh, uh, but a good leader will, will kind of, I call survey the situation. Like how are my people responding, right? Am I being a well to them? Um, how are my people uh, uh, working together? How are they relating to one another? Um, you know, are they fulfilling their destiny? Are they being challenged? Are they being um, inspired? Um, versus do they feel pressured? Do, you know, do they feel uh, resentful? Uh, you know, um, and there's probably, there's a great, uh, a, there's a spectrum of in between those two ends, but um, yeah. Um, so I, I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop there today. That's about halfway through. Um, and um, we'll, we'll do the other segments next week, but um, uh, let's just take any more comments. I want to make sure I did all my notes here. Um, yeah, I think we, we covered everything for today, but, um, I think this is, um, I'm a people person. Well, no, I can be very task oriented as well, but, um, yeah, I think, um, focused on people is very upside down to the way the world functions today. And I, so I think this, as well as the first piece ownership, it's a really big mindset shift that needs to happen uh, to, to, to function God's way, but it's possible, but we just need to ask God to, to, to renew our minds, to think people first. And what does that look like? It's a bit scary. Like how are things going to get done? Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's that's kind of scary. How can I, I do that? You know, that being said, a leader does need to direct, right? A, a leader says, uh, you know, you know, uh, um, you know, like Nehemiah, he directed, you know, uh, uh, this, these people built this wall or uh, this gate, these people built this section of the wall, these people did this, but he did it according to their gifts and their talents and their, their um, experience and their passions, right? Um, uh, um, yeah. Um, so there is a balance, let's just say. All right. Anyways, any questions, comments, testimonies, input, uh, on that piece, people first. Sorry, Kate, I was about to share you what I spent last week, but sorry, later on, maybe I will send you some videos of activities in our yeah. community. Yeah, that would be good. After I stop the recording from the teaching, then we can, sure, if it's sure. a separate topic, yeah. Okay. Okay, sure. I will do that. Sorry for that, yeah. That's okay. Uh, go ahead, Heidi. Um, yeah, it's really good. It's just yesterday I was I was thinking the exact thing, you know, like this, this is our kingdom. Our family is our kingdom. Yeah. And just how important it is to um <laughs> to have that balance you know and how do you keep that balance with um you know keeping the ship running smooth yeah. but also focusing on the destinies of the people involved and you know being gracious not task not too task oriented and um yeah it's 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 a real uh it's a real outworking like it's not it's not something that it's not something that happens overnight. There's no like, you know, do it this way, number one, two, three, four, five. It's like, a, you just, you have to be in it and, and, and be prayerful, like constantly prayerful and, and just hopefully, you know, keep getting, keep getting the Lord's heart on um, his perspective. And cause he sees everybody, he sees everybody's hearts. He sees everybody's talents. He sees everybody's calling. And like the last thing I want to do is, is force the kids to be a part of, you know, something that, um, that they may not be enjoying at the time because, um, we're being too strict with them or, 
um, we're driving them too hard or, or whatever. Cause yeah, I mean, any situation in life can be stressful and, uh, yeah, anyway, I, I'm not really making clear what I'm saying, but this is a really good discussion. I think it's so, it's so important because whether it's our family or, or like a business or a, like the, the kingdom where people are living with you, it's a constant outworking. Is that the right word? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, it is, you're right. Because I mean, every waking moment, right. It's especially for the leader, you're always working, right. Uh, or building, or, I mean, there's so many ways to describe that relating, mm -hmm. uh, planning strategy, <laughs> like you're, you're all, it's a constant thing. Right. Um, yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, it, like you, some people say like a balancing act and it, it's, yeah. So there's, how do I put it? There's, I don't want to say there's no rest because of what I talked about at the very, very beginning, we need to have rest, but it just, you know what, it, bottom line is it makes us completely dependent on God, right? To do it his way, especially, you know, today, where we're at how many generations from the fall have we are we now I, I like thousands of generations from the fall we, you know generation after generation after generation after generation of compounded sinful nature and here we are we could say at the bottom of the gene pool <laughs> yeah. um, and it's like how do we get back to that the Garden of Eden, or even King Solomon, which wasn't as far back. And I really believe our generation are the tide turners. If we're to, you know, uh, often you can't name a generation till after the fact, and you look back on the characteristics of that generation. But I believe our generation are the tide turners of the this generational sin that has come down our generational lines. We've done the hard work of, of uh, deliverance uh, of our family lines, right? And stopping um, the sin from going farther to our children and children's children and so on. So we're the ones like they're holding the tide, like stopping the tide and pushing it back the other way. It's a really mm -hmm. important role. And it's just taking, like, I know even my mind, like, I, th I feel like every month I'm a different person. I, I'm a, a, like, I've changed so much month to month and uh, it's just getting rid of all the worldly ways of thinking and transitioning to heavenly ways of thinking. And it's a lot, it's a lot, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. So it, it's a daily, you're right. It's a day, not even daily. It's hourly dependence on him for direction. Yeah. <laughs> and a little bit of, well, a lot of grace saying, yeah, you know what? The way I did it last week. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I'm going to get it right this week. <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of grace that way. Um, I, I think we need. And just discussions like this, right? Like, because mm. we're all building as we learn and learning as we build. You know, I can't say that that enough, right? But I think you guys are doing a great job, right? Because I like I've seen you guys firsthand. Like, I think you guys are doing a really great job navigating, right? And and just the vulnerability of saying, Whew, yeah, okay, we need, <laughs> you know, uh, you know." There's got to be something better in this area or that area, and then figuring it out, right? Like, like yeah, I think you guys, I think you guys are navigating well. I, yeah, I think there's a there's a real key in what you said earlier about the rest. When when we rest, then we're actually making allowance for the supernatural as well. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and and that's taking our hands off the plow and trusting that God is going has got it because it is his right yeah. and the results are up to him so yeah 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 that's right. hard for doers like us we're doers yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it, um, it's really good to be confronted 
with regards to ownership again, you know, to be confronted with that, that, that reality that God owns everything. Um, I mean, the scripture that, that just keeps coming to me um, throughout this whole thing is, is the, well, not the scripture, but just the example of the rich young ruler who Jesus promised, um, you know, who said you did everything well, but one thing you do lack, go sell everything you have and follow me. Not realizing the, the rich young ruler who went away sad, not realize, went away sad because he didn't realize that if he had left everything, he'd gain everything. Mm. If he left everything that he had, he gained everything. Yeah. Back, right? So yeah. I'm gonna add that in. I'm just gonna I'm gonna add that. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 Thanks, guys. That was uh, that's really good input. Yeah. Uh, anybody else? How did this challenge you today? Like. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do is challenge people. So uh, <laughs> um, I used to not do it in such a, in maybe such a gracious way. I used to be a little bit more of a hammer, um, but um, hopefully now it, <laughs> not quite so bold, but um, we all need challenged. But uh, yeah, how is there anybody else challenged today? What challenged you the most? All right. Okay. Well, let's close in prayer. Um, let's see. Who 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 feels led to pray to close off today? Asafash, do you do you yeah. want to pray? Yes. Okay. Shall I? Shall I? Oh. Yeah. Go ahead, Asafash. If you could close this out, that would be great. Okay. Our Almighty God. Thank you for everything that you are giving us. Thank you, Lord, for this time that you are adding days after days, weeks after weeks, so that we can accomplish the things that you want us to do, to worship you, to know you more. Thank you for this session, Lord. We are learning a lot. We are just, you help us to discover things and to know more. God, we have learned today more that everything is from you. It's God, you, our God owns everything, including our life, our money, our property, our land, everything. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for this revelation. Mm -hmm. And help us to practice it, to make it real. When we talk with people, when we serve people, mm -hmm. when we, in our family, in our ministry, and everywhere, that you, Almighty God, our God, owns everything mm. thank you thank you for this session thank you for everyone and you you have the way in every way through winds through waves through people's teaching you have every way to make us more closer to you Mm. more to understand you, more to know you, more to serve you. God, to make our life like part of heaven so that people can be blessed, 
mm-hmm. can be enriched in their life, can achieve their dreams, Lord. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, help us to make you happy so that you can be, people will bless you. People will say, God, talk to me through someone from each of one, each of us, you know. God helped me through uh, just feeling our names. Lord, thank you for this night, for this evening, and help us to be with you, to more be close to you, and always be reminded that our property and our life are owned by you. In Jesus' almighty name. Mm. Amen. 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 Thank you, Aspash. That was awesome. Yeah. Amen. I'm going to stop recording.